Hello there. Today, you and I are learning the single welded pocket. And I think I'll mention it a few times, but I found this one significantly more difficult than the double welted pocket. Just because you can do one doesn't mean you can do the other. The single part sent me on a run about eight times. Or seven. I don't know. Depends how you count. And before we start, I have one general pro tip for making pockets and I suppose anything in anything in general in tailoring. It's to complete each individual step as precisely and correctly with as much precision as possible. Each mistake is liable to have ramifications through the pocket and each mistake you don't make, yeah, each mistake you, you whatever, is going to will result in a good pocket. This doesn't start too dissimilar from the double welt pocket except some of the pieces that you start with are dissimilar. Yeah. So instead of two jets, there's one jet and it and the bearer are the same size. So 19 by 10 centimeters we're using. You need two 19 by 30 centimeter pieces of silicia for the pocket bags, except you don't, I'd say, 19 centimeters by a minimum of 20 centimeters, and obviously you don't need silicia. The pocket bag material, the usual pocket bag material. Once again, for your trouser piece, I'd say it needs to be at least 21 centimeters wide and 15 centimeters tall. Like the double welted pocket, you ought to make a dart in your trouser material. You can do it the same way as last time, but I have decided to try splitting it in two. I marked my center point and moved three centimeters either side and went perpendicular down eight centimeters on both. I marked half a centimeter either side of those two lines instead of one centimeter either side. This way, the amount of dart is the same. I've sewn the darts closed and marked a 15 centimeter line as my pocket hole. Now you've gotten into the habit of cutting away the loose threads as they come, so we'll move on to the... There are three options you can use, but if you can't use any of them, that's okay for now. You can use pocket linen, canvas padding, or fusing. I don't have two of those, so I have to use canvas padding. We know that they're used to stiffen the pocket opening now, I hope. It's... mine is 19 centimeters wide and 5 centimeters tall. You can use taller should you wish. We're basting it on the inside where the darts are showing, or fusing it if that's what you're using. <laughs> Center it and baste it on the line that you chalked out. The single jet can also be stiffened, and it's actually about twice as necessary to stiffen the single jet, given that it's twice as big as the two double jets. Well, it's twice as big as one of the two double jets. Yeah, but still not needed, not completely needed. It's actually much easier to make the single jetted pocket without it containing any stiffening. Try it without first, and then move on to trying it with. If you try it with, you're only putting the canvas linen fusing on the jet near the pocket opening, not unlike the double jetted pocket. The jet goes on the outside below the pocket hole, lined up and centered open and centered upon where the opening should be. The bearer shouldn't have anything regardless. The bearer goes on like the top jet would, directly opposing the jet on the bottom. Do be sure to copy off the ends of the pocket hole on the inside of the trouser, base the first pocket bag near the top and bottom, and with all the pieces in position, we'll begin. We're now machining everything together. Machine with the jet and bearer on top. You're using these as a guide for a half centimeter seam allowance, so that there's one centimeter between the two lines of stitching that you're making. It's important that you are precisely starting and finishing where your pocket hole starts and ends. My top and or important tip is to back tack onto the edge of your pocket. Don't start 
move forward and then back tack onto it. I personally have had better results that way. Cut your loose threads and you can remove all of your basting so far. Now cut open the pocket hole. Start in the center and make a small cut such that you can get your scissors in in order to cut a straight line. And stop at least a centimeter half, a centimeter and a half away from the edge of your hole because we're cutting a mitre, basically a triangle. Move the jet out of the way, don't cut the jet, but cut everything else. Cut very precisely to the edge of the machine stitch. This allows the welt to lay straight once you've folded it. Before we move on, mark a seam one centimeter from the bottom of the jet. We're going to iron this up. Start with either the jet or the bearer, turn it out through the pocket hole and spread the seam open and iron it. You can really tell good ironing boards from bad ones. Fold out what you didn't fold out an iron already and do the same. It's easy to undo the ironing you just did on the other seam when you do the second seam. So lay the second seam against the edge of the board with the first dangling off the edge. With those open we'll... Not dissimilar to the double welted pockets, it needs to be basted before it can be machined in place. You need to fold the welt such that such that it is one centimeter tall. What's most important, however, is that the welt goes all the way up to the corner of the mitres. If there's a gap, if there's a gap there, your pocket will be deficient. This is why I suggested not putting anything in the jet this time. It's easier to get it up there if it's thinner. By the by, it, this is not an easy thing to do. Case in point, my welt isn't exactly one centimeter, as you no know, doubt notice. But what's most important is getting the welt into the corner of the mitre, and then doing a consistent welt, and then doing a welt which is one centimeter. <clears throat> so I carried on like that. Don't get confused, just do the best that you can do. It's taken a lot of attempts for me to be able to do it at all. Many failures. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's just the single welt, but don't get dejected by your lessons from the best teacher of them all. In order to base this one in place, it would be advantageous to stitch diagonally. This results in a more secure baste. Something that you can do when basting in order to make sure that your welt is consistent is to measure the welt at the point you just stitched. And if it's the wrong height, you can pull out the basting, adjust as appropriate, rethread the needle and try again. Top tip, I might suggest chalking or basting a line on your jet before you baste it onto the trouser 15 millimeters away from the edge. This way, assuming your half centimeter seam allowance was accurate, you can much more easily determine where the one centimeter point is on your welt, because that is how tall your welt should be. Then it's only the pocket bag and the jet that's being machined together. That said, if you want to catch the linen or canvas, that's fine. But if you used fusing, you won't be able to catch it for obvious reasons. A mistake you don't want to make is to machine further than the edge of the pocket opening. This will create problems when for sewing down the mitre. Strangely, I didn't make the mistake when making double welted pockets, so I didn't think of it. But I specify the pocket bag and jet because we're getting those and the bearer for sewing down the mitre. For sewing the mitre, it's, again, pulling the triangle through, folding the trouser material away, and sewing everything else together. This is the point where we find out whether we basted and then machined the welt correctly. The welt should automatically sit at the top corner, but making sure is always a good thing to do. Pull the bearer down taut and machine with the mitre on top so that you can be sure to sew the edge where the trouser and the mitre meet. Now we're ready to... We're filling the welt onto the pocket bag, so baste it in place but don't go through the trouser. Last time we moved, we just moved it out of the way, but you can put something between them, such as your pattern master. I mentioned in the double welted pocket video that you could prick stitch the D before or after attaching the other piece of silesia. Well, in this case it's calico, but usually it's silesia. Since we did the former already, I'm doing the latter this time. I found using a pencil easier than using chalk for marking a D to trace but I think that I shouldn't rely on it. Practicing using chalk will be better for dark fabrics and it's, it'll be easier to remove. Given that they're hidden inside the pocket, they don't need to be the inside 
doesn't need to be as neat as I'd like them to be if they were on show, but apparently practice results in an okay looking offside detack. Now we attach the other half of the pocket, moving all of the trouser out of the way, and when you have a whole trouser leg to move out of the way, you'd better baste the pockets together in order to keep them together as they are machined. What's important here, which is different to the double welted pocket, is that the bearer is attached to the first piece of silesia, not the second. Hence, we need to make sure that the bearer is folded up as the piece, as the pocket is sewn together so that it can be felled later. Half a centimeter on the bottom left and right and get a good corner when you fold it out. And to get a good corner when you fold it out, make sure you turn at right angles in the corner. Before we fold the corner out, instead of cutting away the corner, we'll fold the excess over the stitch on both sides of the corner and fold them out like that. I've said, a corn I've said corner quite a lot in that sentence. We need to fill the bearer into the pocket or onto the pocket. But first, it's more important than anywhere else to baste as a prerequisite. Put your hand inside the pocket and you'll be able to feel the bearer as a guide to the needle. This is something that needs to be felt and shown. It can't so well be explained. To fell, turn out the pocket and fell it. Yeah, simple enough. Remove the basting and we'll enfranchise our seam. First, however, I'm going to go through the rigmarole of basting the seam this time. And I think you should as well. You know, for practice and or posterity. Poster posterity. Moving the stitching right to the edge and basting it to make sure that neither, is o neither side is overbearing the other. I mentioned in the other video that you can roll and push and you can use your knee or you can use your needle to pull the stitches front and center, or both. What's important is that you pull the thread, not the fabric. If you pull a piece of the weave, uh, bad things. Machine with a half centimeter seam allowance, and now we don't actually need to finish the pocket because we already did the detacks. Or I did. You may still need to do them. Regardless, my experience with this single welted pocket is that the single weltedness makes it significantly more difficult. Just keep trying. I have faith that we'll get good at it eventually. See you in a fortnight. And I may be doing patterns, unless I change the order.